Ah. Right. Good evening. Welcome to another edition of Showtime TV. I'm your host, Omar Rasta. Today's program is a very special program. Um, it's called the topic of discussion is women in visual arts. And this is the very, 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 very first time that I've done a show like this. So I am blessed and honored. I have three distinguished guests joining me this evening. I have all our visual artists. And they're, they're so famous, so everybody already knows you are. So I don't know why I need to do any introduction. But anyway, you got uh, Tracy Brace, Tanya Bracey, Janice King, and Crystal Baynard Norman. Ladies, good evening. Thank you for being on tonight's program. Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you for having us. us. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So we're going to start off. Um, I'll start off with, with Tanya. Um, I'd like for all three of you ladies just to let the audience know um, how did you become a visual artist? What, what made you want to become a visual artist? How, when did you start taking classes and so forth? Uh, just just uh, for a couple of minutes or so. Uh, Tanya, you want to start off? Well, um, I really didn't plan on being a visual artist. Uh, I just wanted to draw and to paint. That was really, it was for my own enjoyment. And then people began to see it. Like I would take little scribbles to work or what have you. And I was encouraged to like branch out and um, start, you know, doing like little art fairs and, you know, indoor uh, shows. Uh, so I've I've just decided, you know, I want to commit to it. I love it. I enjoy uh, being able to meet with different people and to display my work. But, you know, it wasn't always like that. That wasn't my beginning. Okay. All right, Janice King. Yes, actually, I was always interested in the arts, you know, even as a young child, but um, got stopped for one reason or another and was never able to pursue it even though I was very creative, you know, I had to work and as I got older. However, my interest did not evade me, even though I was not actually active in it. And I was a little sometimes. I flourished at age 60 after recovering from a serious debilitating illness. And I said, you know, during my uh, spiritual counseling and healing. I said, you know what? An artist has been within, in, within me all of my life and I had to let her out. So I ordered some supplies and started painting and people were amazed. They said, you have this in you all your life? I said, yes. And this is my time. So 60s for me is a golden time and I am flourishing and looking forward to continuing to prosper in the arts and with my art. So, so it's never too late um, to start. It's <laughs> never too early never. or too late to start. That is correct. Awesome. All right, Crystal. Okay. Um, I started back really as a child. Any white page, I would write on it. I would draw. And my mother was like, you had better be an artist when you grow up. She said, girl, you're drawing in my hymn book, my front page of my Bible. She said, you better do something with yourself. So then I went on to... Um, Dell Castle, where I graduated from, I went into commercial art. Uh, when I left there, I went on to the Philadelphia Art Institute, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, did a lot of work around the city of Wilmington, and I just kept it going. Um, and like Janice, but back in the day, we used to paint right on the fabric. You know what I mean? It was no iron on or none of that type of stuff we actually painted on the fabric. And for two years, my shirts and t-shirts and stuff hung in Al Sporting Goods. I always had that nice enamor wanting to be a uh, artist. So that's where mine came from. Um, that's awesome. So I want to stay with Crystal. Uh, some of you may have touched on it earlier, but if you want to get a little bit more in depth, please feel free to do so. Um, how, how do you come up with ideas on what to draw? Do you, do you just sit home and brainstorm or, or, or like when, when you're walking outside, or if you had a particular event, you do you have a vision that hey, I, I, I want to draw this or I want to paint this? Uh, let's start off with Crystal. Okay, they they come from life, but like you just said, so we just not too long celebrated Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. I was so inspired by being there at Juneteenth till when I came home and it kept playing over and over in my head. I ended up with on my wall right now which you'll see at my show with a beautiful painting and everybody loved it. It showed Kamal, the drummer, my girl Brandy with the shakery, um, Abundance Child at her thing with her Indian headdress on. So 
I just get it from life. And today when I got back home, there's something that had been burning in my soul to do a uh, painting of and to give his sister the print, which is the gentleman, the older gentleman up in Philadelphia that the youth, those teenagers beat that man to death. Oh, well, man. I did, yeah. I have him up on canvas now. And when, when this is all over, I'll start painting. So life is what directs my path. Mm. Well, um, you know, I've always been kind of introverted as a, as a child. Um, and I was always looking at people from a distance. So I always came up with like stories in my head of what people were doing, what were they thinking, those type of things. So a lot of my paintings come from like little narratives that, you know, I think up. Um, things that are important to me. Um, some of the more accomplished work that I've done usually comes from like a spiritual background where I'm coming up with uh, something from real life and connecting it to my spiritual um, uh, heritage, you know, and focusing on like a scripture or something like, like my shared burden. Uh, picture, which is about two young men um, that are working late and one is finished um, and the other person still has work to do. But the, the guy who's finished, he stays to work with them. And it's, it's called shared burden because in the Bible, you know, you know, we are commanded to assist other people, even when we're finished, you know, it's part of, you know, our duty to, you know, one another to help each other out you know, whenever, you know, a brother is struggling. Okay, uh, Janice? Yes, um, my inspiration comes from people. Actually, when I started painting, I started painting women because I would be different places and notice some beautiful women, you know, whether it was their makeup, their dress that they had on or their hairstyle. And I would come home and recapture those women that I had seen. So that's what I started doing, painting women, because I'm a woman and right. hey, we, we are all queens, you know? And um, so I have branched off to do some abstracts, some florals, and all that comes from the environment, actually. Different things, I, different scenes that I see throughout the environment, or I may have a vision of something and I create it. And it's really wonderful looking at life uh, at this point of my life, I look at life totally different from how I looked at it previously. So I'm just enjoying life and um, I love people. So I paint them. Yeah. And recently I started a new series called the Renaissance series. And that series represents some of my latent lifelong dreams. Because as a child, I was very creative, very outgoing, but I was always stopped. So I would dream of dancing or doing whatever. So I create, I recreate now those dreams and manifest them on, onto canvas. You know, uh, Chris will mention earlier, uh, Juneteenth, um, you know, one, one of the most fascinating artwork that I like, whether it's drawings or photography, is the history of, of African Americans in this country. Uh, for example, if you go to the African American Museum, man, it, I went there yeah. twice in Washington, D.C. I mean, they had some excellent, excellent Oh, yeah. Photos and, and drawings. And um, here locally, you have the Delaware Art Museum. Sometimes they, mm -hmm. they, they have shows for, for African American uh, artists, visual artists. So, did any one of you three ladies um, ever do drawings or paintings in terms of the history of African Americans in, in this country? Um, I have not. However, everything that I do actually reverts back to my roots. You know, uh, Africa, of course, consists of what, 50 countries or more? And um, each country is different, you know, their culture, their traditions are different, even though they're similar, we're all really one people. So even though I may not particularly graft in my paintings something from Africa, everything is connected. And I am also working on a commission right now that uh, someone wants, and it's called I Dream of Africa. And some of my, yes, and uh, so that's, that's a combination of abstract and uh, a, a sort of a portrait mixed. And some of my work I have done um, of uh, Africa. 
So, yeah. I've um, done um, a series uh, which focused on the Bashi Berserks, which are, I think it's 17, 17th century. Um, they were not mercenaries, but they were guns for hire uh, in the African area where, you know, there were different wars that was going on and, um, you know, they had to build up a military. And the Bashi Berserks were af of African descent and their job, of course, were to be able to be hired and to continue to be a part of whoever's war, whoever could pay for it. Um, it was a living, I thought it was very unique and different. It was something I had not heard about um, uh, before. Um, I had recently heard about it in one of uh, the artists uh, who did a lot of of romanticism paintings over in Africa and Iraq. Um, and I thought that was very interesting. Um, for Juneteenth, I did a couple pictures that focused on not a specific time, but a specific like idea. Um, I did some tigers, uh, which kind of focused on that, an animal of strength and not an animal specifically of Africa, but one that showed a lot of power um, and that I could kind of focus the idea of us as a people and the power that we have on the inside and how it needs to be unleashed, how we're just very powerful individuals. Um, and then I did a, um, a small piece uh, from an original piece I did, it was called Cold. And it was like a young man with the hoodie, you know, back when the young man was shot. Um, I had did like a picture of this young man in the hoodie. But then for Juneteenth, I transformed it with a lot of African colors and African textiles to kind of demonstrate the pride that, you know, African men should have, you know, from their background. But a, a lot of my work kind of falls off of you know, my everyday life, my everyday living. Um, again, like uh, Miss King says, things that I always wanted to do, things I always wanted to be involved in, but I do try to intermingle some African history in that. Right. Crystal. Okay. Um, I've had several pieces that I don't have now that allude to our African background. And one that's coming in my mind right now is called, um, was called Justice, Not Just Us. And it was a little black African girl and she was kind of hiding behind the American flag. Like they treat everybody else right except us. And is it because of the color of our skin? And I have finally um, sold that piece, but I do have one that's, um, in my gallery now, in fact, it'll be at the show and it's called Mother Earth. And it mm. has the uh, African woman with her head wrap on, big earrings coming up out of the earth and the Balboa, little Balboa African tree. And in front of it, in front of her is a pair of zebras and it's a real nice piece. And then of course, the one I was just telling you about from Juneteenth that um, has all the makings of Juneteenth in it the freedom, 1865, the um, African-American flag and um, the colors and our drummers, of course, can't go nowhere without the beat, gotta hear the beat. So, and then another piece that I had, and I believe you've seen this time and time again, Omar, was the one that I did of Harriet Tubman, yeah. where when you look at her jacket, it looks like a pretty jacket from far off, but then when you get up to it, her jacket had slaves in it. So you can see her as the leader leading them to uh, freedom. Well, you know, just listening to, to you ladies uh, speak, I want to ask you, ladies, I, I don't know if you ladies have done these type of visual arts in the past, or you plan on doing, if you're doing it currently in the, in the present, or you plan on doing it in the future. Just listen to you ladies speak. Um, how significant is it that you draw, uh, folk draw and promote, and so how beautiful, um, we speak about uh, black, the blackness and Africanness. Uh, Black uh, facial features in particular, for example, uh, promote and explain how beautiful dark skin is, how beautiful it is to have a wide nose or, or big lips. Because sometimes, you know, we, we look at those features as, as being negative, but, but as African American women, um, how important is it for you three, uh, if it's important at all, to promote uh, 
black beauty, and in particular, like the, 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 the black features and, and the dark skin and, 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 and the hair, especially the hair for the ladies. Right. Yeah. I can tell. Who, who should go? Anyone? Where, where, where wants to go? This is an open question. <laughs> okay, I can say that uh, it is very important for me, particularly as a black woman, and we are, we come in all sizes, shapes, hues of blackness, you know, from very light to very dark. And uh, we wear our hair in all different styles. I know I wear mine in all different styles and I have done that throughout the years. So as a woman, it is important for me to show us in our many styles and many fashions. You know, um, black art has been around for centuries. You know, it is exploding more so over the last, I would say 10, 15 years. And now particularly, so I put up a post today that said black art matters, you know, and it is so important for us as black women and not only as black women, but as black artists as a whole to show our work and to show how talented and cultured we are in our work. So yes. It is very important. All right, so, I agree. Oh, I agree okay. that it is very important that we highlight and show who we are because a lot of times it's seen, but then again, it's colored over another image that we know when we look at it, that that is not us. We do not look like that. And we don't have those sharp noses stop. So right. <laughs> what we look like, you know what I mean? And I, I, that's exactly what I did when I did my first coloring book because I wanted people and children to see us in that light. So I agree totally with you, Janice. Yeah, thanks. I, yeah, I feel the same way. Um, when, when I went to school, I went to P Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts and you know, there's not a lot of us represented there. Right. Um, so one of the things that I thought was extremely important was to paint, because I like painting in a realistic manner, representational, um, to paint more pictures of people who look like myself. Um, and the other thing that I've really tried to focus on is painting a lot of black males. One, I have a lot of men in this household. I'm a mother of three sons and mm. grandsons. So I thought it was super important that they were able to see positive representations of themselves. Um, I see lots of lots of black women and um, as a black woman, I love seeing our, our story on stage. But I also feel like uh, black men also need to be uh, put out there in a light where it is normalized that they are strong, that they are powerful, that they do all these wonderful things, you know, that they are hardworking, that they're responsible. Um, and the more that's seen, the more important it, it is. Um, a girlfriend of mine, when I was at an art fair, was like, oh, you know, I love the idea of, you know, all these Black men up here. It's like you're coloring the world chocolate. And yeah. I love that concept, yeah. you know, because the only way to get Black art out there is to produce it and to have Absolutely. it so that people can see it. I mean, people are interested. All works of life are interested in Black right. art, you know, at this time, you know, because it's showing um, it's showing us in a light that, that people don't normally see in the, in uh, read on the newspaper or on TV or in all these reality shows, they don't always okay. see the other side of blackness. I believe, um, and some of us, you know, we're just very quiet black folks, you know, or we're just very funny black folks, or you know, we're kind of you know introverted, or you know, we're kind of curious. We have a lot of a lot to share, a lot more variety than. I think is actually um, put on the big screen. So the more we as artists are able to show all the varieties that we are, you know, I think uh, people get a better dimension, a better idea on how dimensional uh, Black people are as a whole in our culture. Yeah, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. In terms of gender, as I was thinking about this before the show, all three of you, once again, the topic of discussion for those just tuning in, 
is a woman in visual arts. I said this is the very first time that I've done a show of such. Sometimes we think about visual artists, you know, we may think about men, you know, we may not think about females. So I want to ask you, please, as a woman, because you know better than I do. Um, are, is this a male dominated field still, or do you, or do you see a woman in the equal play, equal recognition? We see more women uh, doing more visual arts. I mean, how, how is it? Um, I would say that uh, historically, it's, it was a male dominated field, mostly. Uh, white Anglo-Saxon men. Uh, however, you know, as Black people, uh, Black artists have hit the scene many years ago. There are some famous Black artists whose works have been sold for millions of dollars, you know. So uh, we, we go in there, right? Right, ladies? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, yes. on the way. we're on the way. <laughs> we're, we're, on the way. we're on the way. And if we don't put out our work and our visions uh, and our own perspective, mm -hmm. you know, we, 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 we lose the battle. You know, we lose the battle. And um, it's really important that um, we do that. And, uh, you know, for women, uh, a lot of women are on the scene. There are a lot of artists who are. Uh, sort of unsung, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, people don't know about them, but uh, there are many art groups, you know, and I'm just recently coming onto the scene in these past five years, and uh, I've encountered and researched lots of female, not only female, uh, male artists uh, who have their work out there, and there's some tremendously fantastic works, yeah. Yeah, I agree. It 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 has been a male dominated um um I guess you say vocation um for a very long time. Uh but if you don't get out there then your voice is not heard. I, right. I totally agree. This is the time period where people of uh, and and I mean it has a lot to do with the internet and you know the all the digital things that are out right now that Absolutely. you're able to, you know, have a voice unlike before. Before, you know, there was an industry, you know, and the industry directed only specific people uh, into the where into the, the mainstream population to be seen. That didn't mean that they were the only ones. It just meant those were the ones that were actually highlighted and celebrated. Mm -hmm. You know, meanwhile, there are tons and tons of artists that are, you know, in in a closet, in their room, you know, drawing on paper, you know, sketching stuff out to themselves, mm -hmm. or just being creative in all kinds of different ways um, that aren't recognized at all. So, you know, I, I agree with Janice. I think that it's up to us and it's our responsibility, you know, to get out there, to get our work seen, to produce work, to not be lazy um, and to understand that, you know, we are, um, you know, we're holding up the line for other people. The further we go uh, forward, the more uh, younger people and other people who thought that they could never have their work seen can come through the door as well. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. I do agree with that as well. Um, and I still think um that the male has the edge over us but like i said earlier we are coming and what we have to do is what you just said um tanya we've got to use social media we've got to take advantage of opportunities to come together because we're all artists but we do different things you yeah. know what i mean and we have a different form a different style we use different mediums so nobody should be jealous of anybody but let's work together let's look at each other's work you know what i mean let's pat each other on the back, the back. Yeah. um and like today oh and another thing is if we start to join these groups that are on uh facebook on instagram the art groups you will see oh my god so many dynamic artists and all and one of the groups that I joined just today um, and already been approved was the comic book group. Mm. Because somewhere in the back of my mind, I've always wanted to do cartoons, but I don't know that I want to do them to the extent of maybe a car comic book, 
But what about a line of crazy greeting cards using the images of Martha and Maddie? So I joined based on that. And I did have a couple of cartoons that I threw up that I showed them. So I did get accepted. And I think it's real cool. And Demetria is having a show in August, the Comic-Con. Yes, you know, yes. Yeah, I'm, in, I'm going I'm yes, part of Comic Con too. Are you going, are you oh too? yeah, I did see your name. I did see your name, Tanya. Yeah. yeah, I went last year. I had so much fun, met so many oh, wow. different artists and bought stuff. So yeah, that's real cool. We just gotta stay out there. That's all. Yeah. No, no. When 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 is that event gonna be and where's it gonna take place? That's August I want to say and six. August sixth. Yeah, mm -hmm. Friday and a Saturday. Yes, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, 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 she has two different. Okay. I mean, she, well, she has a two hundred five address. Oh, the Artscape one, the one right next door to Doctor J. Okay, that's two hundred five. Two hundred five market. Yes. Okay, that, that, that's great. Um, I want to talk about exhibits. I, mean, I I don't know if all three of you have exhibits or not, but if so, um, <laughs> what, what, what is it like having an exhibit of your own? You, you're selling your own artwork. You have your own show. People coming in, look at your work, personally, personally your art. I mean, what, 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 what is that feeling like? I mean, that, that had to be like an awesome feeling. Anybody? Like I said, I, I don't know how many, if all of you did artwork, but if so, feel free to speak up. It what is it? an exhilarating, awesome <laughs> feeling when you're highlighted for the night and it's your work on display and people are coming in. Um, Omar, you've been to my shows. Um, I used to have them at the. Northeast Library over on 34th Street. I mean, we would flood the place downtown in the lobby of the um, the gallery, the city of Wilmington, um, Christiana Cultural Center. I've been all over the place and I, everywhere I went, I've sold. Um, and it just makes you feel good that people are looking at your work and you're just standing behind them, listening to them talk about it. You know what I mean? And you, you know that you have produced something that everybody likes. And our pastor used to say that he enjoys being a minister so much till he would do it for free. And that's just like me. Um, when I first started, I used to face paint, you know what I mean? And then, but once I be out there in that hot ball and sun, all them hours, I soon got a price. And I still did it for the city, helping Rodney Square lots of times. You know, I had a lot of things going on with Maria Cabral and Valerie Tremell. They kept me working. So it's it's just awesome when they stand back and say, oh, look at how you did it. These are birthday parties. I mean, one thing will lead to another. Yep. Yes. And um, so, yeah, that, that is fantastic, Crystal. I can say that the first exhibit that I ever had was shortly after I started painting uh, back in 2018. And I had an open house. I had the exhibit at my home. And I sold my first painting. I was like a child oh. in a candy store. I was so excited. I was like, oh. what? <laughs> and then, yeah, after that, I had... Um, because I was just starting, you know, and I made up a uh, resume letter, a letter of introduction, and I went out to the community, uh, different places. I went on Market Street and I met um, Eunice Lafayette. I, at the time, also, the place was called uh, Loma Cafe, prior to it being Milk and Honey. And that was where I had my first public exhibit outside. Uh, then I had an exhibit at Lafayette, uh, Artscape. Uh, Academy for Peace, uh, also at the Delaware Contemporary Museum. And uh, each time I was like, oh my God, I was so excited. Like, wow, I feel like, you know, there's a saying like, I made it. I'm like, I made it. Yeah. But however, <laughs> I, have a, I have a ways to go, you know. <laughs> but the fact that I was, I felt like I was in the spotlight, you know, yes. um, and being a, a novice, artists, you know, mm -hmm. just coming out, I was really excited, just overjoyed with the excitement. So yeah. Awesome. yeah. I was I was emerging. I have emerged now. Oh, wow. yes. <laughs> All right, Tanya, what you got? What you got? You did exhibits? Well, um I've done quite a few exhibits. I'm trying to think of the first one I did. Um, I think one of the first ones I did, I was at Grace um, Grace Church down in, in Wilmington. 
Okay. And um, I had, I don't know, I had maybe like 21 pieces. I had a lot of stuff out. And I, I, first of all, I remember how exhausting it is to set up. Uh, it's super exhausting. Bring a friend. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and then um, at, I was very nervous. I can be honest. I was super nervous about it. Uh, even though, you know, people knew I drew, this was a lot different. These were, you know, very personal to me. Um, and I found that that was actually a good thing because mm -hmm. people wanted to know the story behind it. So I became a storyteller. So it was, it's always been super important that if I put out a piece of work that I'm able to tell a story behind it. Like people are like, where'd you get this inspiration? You know, um, so there's always like a narrative behind that piece that that marries me to it. Yeah. And then it ends up marrying people to it. Like, you know what? Mm -hmm. I, I accept that. I want to I want to adopt that. That is that is a story that I'm a keen to. I understand, you know, and, you know, it lines up with my own hopes and dreams. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I really like when you're able to do that. Uh, to align people. But, you know, I really love art fairs. I love art fairs super, super, super um, because you get a chance to really kind of uh, meet people on the fly. You know, uh, when people come to your show, they know they're coming, right? They're like, I'm coming. You <sighs> talk to them, you send them texts, you know, but at an art show, you're catching people off guard. Like right. they didn't, they're like being introduced, like, whoa, what's going on over here? And there's this great opportunity to have this very spontaneous, um, you know, interaction with people and to tell them a wonderful story about um, the art that you're creating. And I find that people really like that interaction. Um, and I like seeing them the next year. Like this was the first year you know, because I've done some shows, but a few of them I've done like a couple of times. Mm -hmm. So I did Belfont um, um, Art Festival three times now. And this time I was out there and I met people who had come to the show the year before. And it was so neat to talk to them. They were like, oh, let me show you a picture of where I put your artwork at. You know, I gave it to my sister-in-law because she loved prints, you know, so then they had a story to right. give back to me, yeah. you know, um, and I, I think that is like so endearing to exchange stories. I think that's part of our African culture. Right. Our African culture surrounds exactly. storytelling, mm -hmm. you know, that's how we pass on history, you know. Yeah. Let me ask you, I see in the background, all three ladies got some beautiful pictures in the background. Um, is there a picture or two that, that you want to take the time out to, to showcase and explain what it is? Um, it's all up to you, ladies, because, you know, I see all this beautiful art in the background. So I'm gonna <laughs> yes, I would, love, so. I would love to do that. Um, okay. uh, let's so see how I'm going to do that now. One minute. Let me see if I can get up and... Yeah go to the piece that I want to show you. Actually, this one is called Out of Africa. Let's oh, see if you okay. can see it. Can you see it? Yeah, oh, yeah. it yes, the top piece is the continent of Africa, red, black, and green. The red at the top has little red spots indicating the blood. The middle piece has the black figures of people. And the bottom piece has the green for the land. And at the wow. bottom of the painting, at the bottom of the painting is a tree on the side here, Mother yes. Earth of Africa, that's the figure, and his father time carrying a, a staff and a child. And wow. The, wow. The, frame, the frame of the painting is all hand done. That's a hand painted frame, and the continent of Africa is trimmed in gold, fourteen karat gold. Wow! Ooh. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank that you. Awesome. That is awesome. Anybody else want to showcase your work? <laughs> yeah, I can. Hold on. Let me see. Okay. I, so, so yeah, uh, should I turn this around? Or let me uh, turn this around. 
Uh, if I turn it around, I'm gonna mess it up. Yeah, I'll just hold on. hold on. Let's see. Ah, there we go. Okay. So let me see. Um okay, so this this one right here, uh, this is one of the newer pieces that I have. It's called, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, I want a skinny papa. And oh wow, that's cute. <laughs> that one, um, that one came from actually a show. Me and my husband love it. Lovecraft Country. I don't know if anybody saw Lovecraft Country. Country, no. uh, but it's a story about sci-fi and uh, racism and African history. Oh my God, it's it's just amazing. All black cast. Um, and a lot of people that, you know, you didn't know, um, and they were just talking about this wonderful story, this wonderful concept of fantasy and sci-fi back in the 1960s when there were all kinds of civil rights things, you know, going on, um, and it had like a horror element, but it's something I had never seen in reference to African Americans being displayed, and the two sisters in the show were singers. Um, and one of the songs they were singing was "I Want a Skinny Papa," and I had never <laughs> heard that before. I was like, "Oh, I love that picture! I love that song so much!" So I, I painted a picture of that, and uh, this one up here. This is actually one of my favorites. This is called Eyes Haven't Seen, and that's from the scripture, Eyes Haven't Seen, Ears Haven't Heard. Ears haven't heard. Oh, nice. haven't into the heart of man what God has promised for uh, his children who love him. And um, I did that picture, of course, with males because, of, co of course, I, I wanted to be able to portray them, you know, in a way of delight and, you know, fasting themselves to God's word and what it means and how, you know, you know, we really don't know all that God has for us. We, we just need to wait in anticipation. And he always surprised, he always wows us. And the guy is covering his eyes because, you know, it's nothing that he could ever imagine. I can imagine big too. I'm a big imaginer, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, uh, and the, the idea that, you know, you can't even fathom what God has uh, ready and, and stored up in the future for you. And um, I just love that picture because it reminds me of that promise. Nice, nice. All right, Crystal, what you got? What you got? Okay. Um, wait a minute. I'm over here. There you go. Can you see Mother oh, Earth? Yes. yes. What I was talking about called wow. Mother and the zebras, the Balboa tree, and her. And I love acrylics. That's my medium that I love to work in. And although this picture is here, still here in my gallery, this is called um, <laughs> Oh, that's sad. I had to look at Oh, separating, separating reality. Separating reality. Wow. My, first, my first book cover. And this picture is so but he, my son, he left it here. This was the first piece I ever sold for a thousand dollars. Wow, he, nice. He nice. laid out a thousand dollars because that was the price of it. Because that really, right. in my mind, I never intended to get rid of it. So I said, "Well, I'll put that type of a price tag on it. Yeah. I'll keep it forever." Uh, mm -hmm. Not so, but that's <laughs> the name of it: separating realities. It has the actual fringe on it, and. Wow. One other piece that I will show you in my gallery, this right here, because my sons are bikers, and that's can you see a good a thunder guard? Yes. Wow. Um, yes. Nice. And this is an actual bandana that's in his pocket. Oh, oh okay. That's cool. That's really see nice. Chain? See awesome. the chain on his wallet? Yeah. The chain. Yes. It's awesome. Yeah. I do I do different things to my work, but yeah, that's my 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 collection and as rose versus i mean roe versus wade came into play and a lot of our rights were taken away and different things this was my piece for that 
where mm. she's laying on the ground, her hair is tangled because now we're in a tangled mess and we used to have the road to freedom, but now it's been blocked. Well, yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. That's, that's called under construction. Wow. That's beautiful. Nice. Yeah. That you, and that's a new piece, right? That's a new, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Wow. Yep. And now, little... Janice, this is, this is to you. Huh? I'm going to show you my shirt that I have on because I knew you was going to wear something of yours. I oh. said, I've never had nothing of mine to wear on. So I said, okay, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show up, mine. I set up mine. last night and made all these queen hats, queen nice. crowns, and wrote queen on there. I said, I'm going to mess with Janice today if I don't do nothing else. <laughs> And see, I'm wearing my painted shirt. I see. Yep, I see. See, <laughs> listen, we ready. We ready. <laughs> that's right. Listen, but you know what? It is so because we purchase so many other people's clothing, yeah. and yeah. I had decided way in the beginning when I started painting to create some art products. I'm like, hey. I'm going to wear and promote my own products, you know? Right. So I, I very rarely buy t-shirts. I may buy from other vendors that I know yeah. great shirts, you know, but I, I I like to wear my own products, yeah. There you go. Right. Uh, first of all, you just mentioned that, that you sold a piece for $1,000, but so I want to ask you ladies, um, how, how, how do you determine how much to charge for your art, artwork? Is it the size of the artwork or is it how long that you did it? Um, how, how do you determine what price to put on your artwork? I can say that for me, it was difficult to decide in the beginning because again, I was just emerging and I didn't know. So I had asked a couple of other artists, you know, what the, uh, how they priced and then I researched it for myself. So it depends. It depends on size, number one. It depends on content, number two. And it depends on how detailed or intricately design the work is in the mm -hmm. so it depends on quite a few different factors and I try not to overprice or underprice my work so there's a there's a little scale sometimes that I use uh, to decide on what the pricing is and um, and then for commission or work that people want me to do custom work that's a different pricing yeah because mm -hmm. that is basically designed sometimes on what they want, what colors they want, what patterns they want to have put in the uh, artwork, yeah. So it, it, the price does vary. I can say that the most I have uh, sold a piece for was so far $1,500. Right. And uh, I'm working on a commission currently that's like $3,000. I'm like, yes! yes. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Anybody else? I, I too. I got tired of going back and forth. In the very beginning, I was I underpriced all the time, like all the time. I was like in the sell, 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 and um, but I had a lot of like you know uh, veteran artists that would say, "Ah, oh, you're selling that for eighty five. You should put another zero. You know, I'd be like, "Oh my god, you know, I'll never yeah. sell it." You know, um. But, you know, I, I learned to value my work um, and value it in such a way that, you know, I would get paid for, you know, what I what I put out. Um, okay. So I decided to do a grid because I don't like going back and forth because it's just too much of a headache. I got other things to do. So, and I, I use a lot of, I, I use a couple of things. I use my size. And I use the medium because I do charcoals, I do acrylics, um, and I have a couple of oils, and I do some assemblage work. So I, I made myself a grid, um, and off my best choices, um, I made some some really like um, hard prices that I might vary back and forth a little bit, but I try to stick in it because it's, it's easier for me to remember because people will ask me like off the cuff, like how much is that, yeah. you know? And I'll be like, oh, send me an yeah. email, you know? <laughs> like, uh, and commissions, I always double with commissions. I hate commissions. Commissions take a lot of time. Yeah. Right. Um, 
people people want very specific type of things or at least they believe they do and then it begins to adjust and modify and the time that you put into it you can't always uh you know get that recompense back financially so i i try to put commissions way out out the box so that i don't have to do too many of them you know i just i just can't um i think the highest i've had i've sold is is 1800 i lucked up um i got 1800 one um right. i want that to be my um you know i want that to be my norm so right. that's why i'm staying out there so that people can see it you know and the more i believe i'm worth it the more it'll happen exactly. so I, I i stick in it i get the work out there and i believe that people are interested in it you know so my thought is that's that's how pricing for me that's how pricing works for me mm -hmm. mr Boehner. <laughs> basically i um when i finish a piece I'll pray about it. And then if it feels right to me, then that's how I price it. I don't really have a a metric that I go by. It's right. just like that. Because if I went by time, then I probably would make no money. Because <laughs> ever since I'm on this comeback road from being sick, it used to, I would say maybe it might take me a couple weeks or sometimes almost a month, but I was working then too, you know, to finish a piece. Mm -hmm. But now I'm telling you, I've been cranking them out in mm -hmm. two, three days. Two, yeah. three days. I kid you not. Like the show that I have coming up in October, Janice, I want to do 25 to 30 pieces. Right now, I'm 15 strong done. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Done. Mm -hmm. And they're all going to, it's going to be um, art that speaks. And right. the reason why it speaks, I'm a poet. And each that's one will right. have a separate poem that's going to be hanging by it. Nice. nice. Wow. nice. But uh, Omar, I can say, you know, that, um, and I'm pretty sure the uh, other artists may agree with me, that, uh, you know, we are worth it. We are worth yeah. it. I look and I hear and I see what other artists who have, who are veteran artists, of course, you know, what their work sells for. And I know, because I've come to know that I am worth every bit that I charge, you know? Thank and sometimes you. I say to a person, I says, well, um, if they see a price, I say, make me an offer, you know? And if their offer comes close, they can have the piece. So, mm -hmm. but I, yeah. I know that I, as an individual being, spiritual being, I am worth every penny to be exchanged for the work that I do. Yes. Absolutely. Well, let me ask and there's people this. out oh, there sorry, that are going to buy it too. That's the whole thing. There yeah. are people out there that will spend their money. I mean, yeah. pay attention to how, I mean, let me just say, I think that culturally there is, uh, we are learning to value African-American art. We're learning. Right. We're learning to divert our money differently, mm -hmm. you know, but we often spend like some ridiculous amount of money on, on a dress right. or, or a pocketbook <laughs> exactly, or a pocketbook. And, oh. um, I know that in, in different cultures, they will spend the exact same amount of money on a piece of, piece art. of art. There yeah. is, and there will be no blinking. Right. So the more we learn how to value it and put it out there and people mm -hmm. respond to it, you know, I know that what happens is people begin to value the art differently as well, because we begin to value it differently. Right, right. And we have to find the particular market for our yeah, art. Yeah, you got to find a market. A great art, you know, is not, it can be for everyone but it's really not for everyone. It's only for those who appreciate it. Uh, if the art speaks to them, if it emotes any, you know, emotion for them, you know, yeah. there are some people, there are some people that buy, uh, they say, oh, you know, they'd rather go to uh, Walmart or somebody <laughs> and buy okay. a, a print or something. Like the that. Dollar store. 
if that's if that's what you want, you know. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so yeah. So, so let me ask you, ladies. Let me ask you, ladies, this question: <clears throat> Have there ever been a piece or pieces that you enjoy so much that you said, you know what? I, I can't sell this. I, I got to keep this keep this to myself. I, I can speak. Say, go ahead. I regret that I can speak on that first. When I went to um, art school, anybody remember the um, Jet magazine? Yes. Oh yeah. Remember them little jets? Mm -hmm. Well, the guy that was one of my teachers, Charlie Ellis, he used to do the cartoons and stuff that was on the cover at times. So he was already a oh. fall in love with your artwork, mm -hmm. that you that you are afraid to get rid of it, or you love it so much it becomes a part of your furniture. Yeah. You're going to have a stack and stacks and a room full of pictures that you know down the road you don't want. You don't want. So I have never. Uh, it's, it can be so beautiful. Uh, my, my work is beautiful. And I'll be like, wow, this is so cool. I can't wait to sell it. That's how I am. I understand, Crystal. Uh, me too. You know, I, I I love every one of my works. You know, and um, sometimes it's like, oh, do I want to sell this? And I'm like, Janice, you got to sell it. You can't hold and hoard everything for yourself. You got to get it out there to the world. And I know when I sold my Harriet Tubman piece, I was like, oh no, she's gone. The original <laughs> sold. Yeah, that sold uh -huh. about two years ago. Okay. And I was like, okay, but I have a print of it. You know, so that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, there are some pieces I do kind of feel sad. Sometimes when they when they go, you're like, oh man, it's not coming home with me. Yeah. Um, you know, it does feel it, it feels some kind of way. Um, but I started reproducing. Like I do some, I have some prints, but then I started doing a double. Like if something I really like, I I try I try to challenge myself and do a double of it, mm. uh, just so I can have it. You know, have just one more of it. Um, if I really really like it, mm. you know, if I really like it, I just want to hold on to a little bit of it. You know, because it, when it goes, it's gone. It's gone. You see that person no more. I mean, you might run into them. They say, "Oh, it looks so good over my uh my uh my chimney area." You like, <laughs> oh, no, it looks good there. I never see it no more. So, yeah, I do feel a little sad, but I, I, I'll make myself a copy. Yeah, good. Oh. Okay, so that, that copy, excuse me, Omar, that copy is for you, right, Tanya? Because you can't redo an original and sell it again. Right. I might sell it again. No, no, I might sell it again. Actually, I got a picture now. I made a, I made a, I made, I made a slam it. I, I can't tell the original from the copy. I'm putting that in the show um in um in the end of july if somebody buys it well i'll just have to say goodbye to it again no um, you don't change it no you don't change any part of it well actually i did i did change the color yeah, like I agree. Uh, yeah, that's the, yeah yeah I, mm -hmm. I did change the color <laughs> somewhat of it um but i did do an i did do an exact copy one now this is a this is a terrible, funny and terrible story. So like um, I was at this job, right? And I had this picture there, right? Up on the wall. And uh -huh. I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna keep this job. Well, no, I did not, okay? I got let go slash fired, right? And um, there was a friend of mine that worked there. I said, just take all the stuff off the wall. You could just have it because I can't come back, right? So I, at, weeks later, I realized the picture that she had that I left on the wall. And I said, oh, my God. And um, I had it on a website somewhere. And somebody was like, oh, I would love to get that picture. Right. So I am looking for this picture, looking, yeah. looking, looking, looking. I go to Milk and Honey. I go talk to the bishop there. He's like, Tiny, that picture's not here. I was like, oh my God, I lost track of this picture and realized that I gave it to this girl. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna make me a copy of this. I made an exact 
copy <laughs> of that picture painstaking because I was like, I'm going to sell this. You know, long story short, it turned out to be a scam, right? It was oh. a scam. But well, now I have me a copy of that picture all over again. <laughs> wow. Okay. You all, any of you ladies teach art? Uh, I have taught art. Actually, when I was a teacher, in school, uh, when I was a teacher years ago, I taught art to children. <clears throat> I taught the um, nursery, second grade, and fifth grade, and I did do some art classes with them. Uh, since I have emerged, I have done some art classes at the neighborhood house here in the summertime. Uh, that was a, a couple of years ago. Yeah. So, and I do fun paint parties. I do step-by-step -step guided paint parties, yes. I do oh, yeah. um, art therapy groups oh, okay. um, with, with oh. a, a number of different populations. Um, and right now I am teaching art to, uh, to a young woman on, on the weekends. Mm, nice. I've done art with the seniors, women's and senior centers. Um, I've done a lot of things with them, but before then, back in the day, I worked at the YMCA's, Girls Inc., Brown, Boys and Girls, you name it, I was there. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. And we won some awards and stuff, too, our kids. Is there one particular artist or a couple of artists that you had come to admire? Any one of you can answer. Um, yes. I admire all artists. I don't have one particular um, artist that I admire, uh, some more than others, but I admire all artists. Yeah, the fact that they're creative uh, and um, can depict whatever it is, whether it's there from their personal life or the environment and put it out there for people to see. So I do admire all artists. Well, I have three that I love. One is Salvador Dali. He's from um, Spain and he's a surrealist artist. I just love him. I fell in love with him back in school. Also MC Usher. He's the one that um, he used pencil a lot, but he writes up. I mean, he, his drawings look like they're upside down, right side up at the same time. And he uses that deep perspective. And then I used to be in an um, art club with Charles Bibbs. You might have heard his name. Mm, yeah, yeah. Like oh, his work. I love him with the elongated figures. Yeah. yeah. Those are my three. <laughs> I like, um, I really like, of course, Michelangelo. Love Michelangelo. Um, I also love um, Caravaggio. And uh, there's an a, a Italian woman artist. Um, and her name is Artisma. I never get her last name right. Gerkenstein, okay. I think. Um, and I, I, I saw her work at a museum one, uh, one year when I was in school and I was just amazed by what she did. So, yeah. um, there's a couple artists that, and there's a couple newer artists that I like. I mean, mm -hmm. of course I love Edwin Lester, shout out. And, mm -hmm. um, I do love Mr. Poncho Brown. Um, Poncho, yeah. you know, so, and I love, yeah, yes. I like, uh, Ron Hicks, Poncho's my mentor. And um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I like a lot of comic artists. I like Alex Ross, you know. You know, I, I think that we have like a number, I, I think everybody has like a bunch of artists that they lean right. from and that they enjoy looking at their work because you know that's that's what artists do. Like we yes. we enjoy art itself. We enjoy yeah. looking at art itself. That, that, that is awesome. Uh, uh, Crystal, I want to give you a, just a couple of minutes to, to, to share your story. When I, you and I did a Facebook Live at the Academy of Peace a couple of months ago, you shared how you had COVID and you had to learn to, to do art all over again. If, if, if I stand yes. correct, just briefly share, yeah. share that story because it's so fascinating. Um, I, <clears throat> I, wrote a, I wrote my autobiography and I was just getting ready to put that out but I hadn't finished it yet. And then I got sick. It was on December the 13th and I went into the hospital and they did the COVID test on me and I had COVID and pneumonia, okay? Mm. So what happened is my heart rate dropped so low and my 
oxygen level, they immediately put me in ICU, okay? And then um, things still wasn't going good, so I had to go into an induced coma. I was in that coma for three weeks, and that is where all my strength went. So once I came out of it on January the 4th, that's when I realized I couldn't walk, I couldn't talk, I couldn't set up, I had nothing. It was like a Job experience. I lost it all. And one of the nurses was going past the door and she said, happy new years. I said, what? And I know I must've said it angrily. And she said, no, no, I was just saying happy new years to you. I said, new years, what happened at Christmas? She said, oh, I forgot you were in a coma. Well, that blew my mind. Wow, wow. That blew my mind. And then as I'm trying to get myself together, and I found out I was whispering because I really had no voice. Like you, that's how I sound for like two weeks. And I'm trying to understand as I'm trying to write, Janice. I'm trying to draw, and everything was dyslexic, backwards, jumbled up. I'm like, but in my mind, I kept saying I knew who I was, but I wasn't sure no more. Right. So I had to look at my phone. Oh. Uh, I had to go through Facebook, Instagram, my photos to see my life. Can you imagine doing that? Yes. Um, I forgot every every poem. I was I was dynamic at doing open mic. I could do ten poems and hit it and quit it. I couldn't do a one. I couldn't remember anything. It was a rough road. I promise you. Yes. It was so rough till they even had called my son in to look at me to say goodbye, but God had a plan. Yeah. You hear me? God had a plan. It didn't go that way. So once I reacquainted myself with myself and I started looking at, thank God I have poetry and stuff in my phone, I started looking at different things. Then it all started coming back. God started bringing it back to my remembrance and he lifted me up to a new standard. My son mm -hmm. said, mom, I'm going to bring your laptop out there to you so that you can start finishing your book. I said, no, don't bring that out here. He said, yeah, you need something to do. He said, because right now you're just looking at yourself. He said, you're going to become depressed. I don't want that. So he brought my laptop out. I finished and I put a bonus part on in the book that talks about my COVID experience because it was deep. I had all kinds of illusions, y'all. I went all kinds of places in my mind. I could hear people talking, but I just couldn't say nothing. I couldn't come up out of it. And then the worst part, no, that this is the blessed part, is that the next day they were going to put a trach in my throat. That's how bad I was, Janice. Wow. They were going to put a trach in my throat. But when I tell you the angels are real, at the foot of my bed was a male angel. He turned around, wow. I promise you. He came up to the head of my bed and he said, do you trust me? Mm. I looked at him, I said, yes. He reached over, turned off the ventilator, took the tube out of my throat. He gave me a, the oxygen, you know, the little oxygen pillows. Yes. With that on me, he said, you're good. He turned and I promise you, he never walked out the door. He dissipated into wow. death. Wow. This is how I know that it was God, it was an angel, because when the nurse came back in my room, she said, oh, they took you off the ventilator? She picked up my um, chart. She looked at it. She looked at me like she didn't see a signature. So she hung the chart back. Mm -hmm. She went over to the desk. Then mm -hmm. another nurse came in. She picked it up. She said, how are you? I, said, I just nodded my head because I had no voice. She looked on there and she shook her head, she hung it back. Next thing I know, it was a crowd of them at the desk. I couldn't hear them, but they were gathered. It was a mystery to them too, how wow. I got over there. But wow. I know that it was God. Yes. That's right, I know that's it was right. God. Amen, amen. That's, God. amen. That's, awesome. that's, that's awesome, that's awesome, that, that, that is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. you know, usually ladies as visual artists on top of the program, but uh, I wanna give you ladies an opportunity before we close out to talk about some other the other talents, because you, you're more than just visual artists. Uh, I know some of you got uh, some other talent that, that you do in terms of being an artist. So um, whoever wants to go first, they can go first. 
Okay. Uh, <laughs> Everybody's going, I'll go. <laughs> I'll go. Um, yes, you know, and uh, I can, before I start that, uh, I would just want to say uh, to Crystal, thank you for sharing that story. I can really identify and empathize with you as I too was very ill prior to me mm -hmm. becoming an artist. But uh, the things that I have uh, that I'm doing now is um, number one, Janice King Art. Dot com that has most of my work there. And there's also a link there uh, that you can click to um, take you to my art products. Art products such as prints, tech products, housewares, wearable art, that's there. In addition to that, I am a radio show host. Ooh. And I'm a radio show host and my show is called the Wilmington Renaissance. And the Wilmington Renaissance is based on the Harlem Renaissance, which occurred in the 1920s to the 1930s. And all the cultural, talented, creative people moved from the, the uh, migrated from the South to the North for a better life, you know, better living, better li conditions. And they brought all their talents with them. So I named my show the Wilmington Renaissance because Wilmington has so many creative and talented people and so do the surrounding communities. And my show gives those artists of all genres, such as painters, writers, poets, spoken word, musicians, singers, videographers, any person in the art, in the arts can have a voice on my show. And each show is aired on Saturdays from four to 5 p.m. on WHGE 95.3 FM. They're the only black owned radio station in Delaware. It's a low power mm. station. You can only hear it in Delaware, but that's what my show is. As an artist, I want to give voices to other artists also. And um, I have a wearable art clothing line. My clothing line is um, based in Canada. The work is done in Canada and in the US and it features my artwork, uh, clothing line, such as dresses, tops, tunics, pants, scarves, basically. And um, that is uh, on the Gallerista, Janice King Art, Rebirth, Rejoice, Create. Because as a being, I created myself. I rebirthed myself, put it that way. I'm rejoicing and I'm creating. Um, and of course, Omar, as you know, I'm your stage play manager. Omar <laughs> Ricotta, stage play, Ooh. three men, three women. It is fantastic. And it will be opening in August, August 27th, right, Omar? August 27th, 7 p.m. at the Women's in uh, Drama League. That's right. Ooh. That is right. So I'm excited with the things that I'm doing. You know, I thank God for my gifts. Prior to me emerging as an artist, I just want to say I was very ill, couldn't walk, couldn't hold a toothbrush, couldn't hardly do anything. I had a home attendant. I was in bad shape, pain 24-7. Had to have three joints replaced, two hip replacements, one knee replacement. And um, prior to all that, while I was ill, I kept saying, Janice, there are some gifts that you have got to get out of you and share with the community and with the world. So that's why I started painting. And um, yeah, so I, there's more to come. There's a whole lot more to come. I have uh, visions and imagination, and I know that uh, God is going to help me bring those to fruition. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I I don't have a clothing line. That's okay. You <laughs> can. I well, I want to say I'm going to support your clothing line. Okay. I'm, cool. a, I'm a, I, I do things out of necessity. I'm a yep. carpenter out of necessity. I sew out of necessity, you know, and I think it comes from the bowels of my creativity. So a lot of other things that I do, you know, are because I can't imagine that I can do them. Mm -hmm. That's why I do them. Um, but they're because I need it. My right, right. art comes from, a, a, my visual art comes from a different place. And it always has for me, um, I think, because uh, in my life, I have put it down so many times um, and have allowed like work or children or obligations to get in the way of me being able to 
create, you know, so it's always been that one little cupcake that I had for myself. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what, that's what, that's why I think I just do visual arts, but all other things are possible whenever they're needed. So it's exciting to hear all the wonderful things you ladies are doing. So Tanya, yeah. how, how, how can people get in contact with you? Oh, they can check me out on tanyabracyart.com. I'm also on Instagram, Tanya Bracy. I'm an older person, so I use my name, not a handle. Uh, please check it out. Um, I also have two shows coming up. Um, actually, three. Um, this Friday, I'll be at Belfont Shops. They have a Friday uh, sidewalk sale. I'll be exhibiting work. Uh, between four to eight on the 30th I'll be in Milford for the Ladybug Art Festival that'll be all day if you live that way come check it out and then um, August 5th and 6th I will be in Wilmington at Artscape for the uh, the Black Comet Convention all right okay. all right Crystal close this out okay um I'm an artist a poet, I am a storyteller, and I am also a author. Yeah. I have four books, four books that are out now, and I'm working on my fifth, about to bring it home and get it published sometime in August, and it's called You Don't Know What I'm Capable Of. Wow. wow. Nice. It's, it's awesome. Now, that title is not referring to me, but it's referring to the characters that I use in my stories and stuff. Um, and it takes place in Washington, DC. And the two twins, Naeem and Naya, they are um, kind of running things down there. Um, they got good jobs. They graduated from school at 17. And by age 25, they were well off living in a gated community. And a lot of drama, a lot of action. So if you like that type of a, a book and you know me and my, character then you know you in for a good read yes. and so um, I do that and also a motivational speaker and my lifelong story now is to continue to uplift God and to let others know that he loves you and so do I yes. and that he'll take you to that he'll take you to it but he'll also bring you to it mm -hmm. that's right Absolutely, absolutely, yes. Contact, Crystal, contact information. Oh, how can you contact me? Um, I have an awesome website, and it's www.therealities.com, and that's spelled T-H-E-R-E-A-L-I-T-I-Z-E.com. I'm also on Facebook under Crystal Baynard Norman. I'm on Instagram under Separating Realities, and you can find me and look me up, hit me up, and let me know what's up. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And I have a show coming up at um, the Academy for Peace on October the 7th. It's Ooh. going to be not only my art loop night where my work will be shared, but it's also like a reception for my um, retirement party because I have retired from that work world, and now I'm doing me, doing what I want to do. Absolutely. Wonderful. Absolutely. And it's from five to nine. I'm going to have live jazz. A male poet's going to come in and drop something on us. So come hang out. And I'm also going to do a raffle. Um, and then on October the 22nd, if you've never seen, you can Google this or you can go on YouTube, Martha and Maddie, which is the comedian side of me. Oh my God, if you've never seen Martha and Maddie yeah. for a treat. We, have, we usually always sell out. The tickets are going good now. And before I got sick, we put it up in October. The tickets were sold out by the end of October for a show that wasn't even coming yeah. up until September. But I got sick. Wow. And so I refunded everybody their money back. And so now we're back on for October the 22nd at the Academy for Peace. And we're also giving away um, memorabilia bracelets. They say laugh at us. It stands for laugh and feel fine at uncontrollable seniors. Oh, wow. wow. That's, That's nice. That's cool. Yeah. And That's ladies, really cool. and, and ladies you, heard, you heard it first on Showtime TV. You three ladies, 
could get together and do an exhibit called the Woman of Color and Visual Arts. You heard it first? Oh, oh, definitely. Right. Definitely. Oh, that sounds right. cool. That sounds uh, before, yeah. Before we go, Omar, I just oh, want so to invite Tracy, excuse me, I want to invite Tanya to appear as my special guest on the Wilmington Renaissance radio show. I will oh. be contacting you. Yes, Crystal has appeared oh. and I would love to have her back at some point. And Omar, I would love to have you at some point too. So oh, let, yeah, me yeah. Okay. <laughs> let me just put that out there. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, called, it's called networking. See, see us. Yeah. That's, no, right. That's right. That's right. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Ladies, thank you for being a guest. And don't, don't forget you. that exhibit. Don't, don't forget yeah. that exhibit. <laughs> we won't. We'll, we'll, we'll plan it. And thank you, Omar, for having me and the rest of us on the show. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Anytime. Anytime. Thank you like, subscribe, share. Hey, good night, ladies. Take care. Stay safe. Okay. Thank good you night. again. Take it Bye. easy. Bye, everybody. Have a good one. Yes, you too. You too.